Alright, guys. I'm gonna close this, okay? Alright. Okay. Alright. Alright, I'll give you a yell once I figure out what's going on. Alright. Alright, guys. This is another no AC. This customer has two units. This is the first floor. It's the unit that's not working. And I got my tools already over here. When I got here, this unit was running. I told the customer to turn that one off so I don't get too confused. So this is our unit in doubt. So I got my tools out here. Let's open this bad boy up and let's see what's going on. I'll see you in a little bit. Guys, we got here and if we push our contactor in, the unit runs, but guys, this is supposed to happen by itself. Now, the only thing I did was I went inside and I verified that I had air blowing out the vents. But guys, what I gotta do is I'm gonna get my meter and I wanna make sure that I have 24 volts going out here to this coil. Because if I don't, then that means I gotta go back inside and I gotta troubleshoot. But however, if I do have 24, then it means I got an isolated issue and I mean some out here is causing this contactor not to pull in. But let's check this out and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Do this with one hand. So from one leg to ground, I got 24. Guys, all that means is that R to Y is closed inside. So that means I don't have to go inside and start getting crazy with my safeties or anything like that. Now guys, what I gotta do is I gotta see, and we can probably look at this together here. If this thing has a high pressure switch or a low pressure switch. And let's see here, you can't really see it. See that button there? That is a high pressure switch. Now guys, the stupid thing I don't get is that these are manually resettable. They don't automatically reset on their own. Me personally, I, like I say, you can tell this is like some back in the day shit because like I said guys, the newer switches, similar to the call that I just had earlier, if that high pressure switch or low pressure switch opens up, eventually once you fix the issue, it automatically closes. But this one, you gotta manually reset, so. What I gotta do is I gotta pop the top and I gotta push that in and I'm gonna, for sure, I gotta make sure this unit is running before I check my pressures. But guys, I'm gonna see if I can reset that switch and we'll see what's, what happens next. I'll see you guys in a little bit, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, we push this in and our contactor is pulled in. Now guys, this is the effect. Do not assume just because I pushed that in that this unit is gonna work. Once I put this back together, now I gotta figure out why this happened. And guys, this is on my smaller line. So this is indeed a high pressure switch. So I don't know if the fan is going on. I don't know if the fan didn't work or what's going on with the cat, but guys, all I know is that switch was, that high pressure switch was open. I just had to pop the top to reset it. And now my contact to cool is, is close so now let me put this back together and let's crack a toe here let's see what happens i'll see you guys in a little bit peace all right ladies and gentlemen i present to you guys the moment of truth let's find out what the hell was going on and just give you some history here this is a 1912 this is a 2012 13 sear three and a half ton or for today so this unit looks to be about 12 years old but, guys, eventually you'll know there's a good 12 and there's a bad 12. A good 12, guys, is a unit that is 12 years old, but it's been maintained. This unit looks to be in better condition than some of the ones I've seen. A bad 12-year-old unit would be, like I said, something that says to, <laughs> that says 1912, but it's been, looks like it's been ran through the dirt. So, so guys, what I'm going to do is... I got everything connected. I reconnected my logo wires. And now, let's crack a toter here. So, the fact that my compressor and my outdoor fan motor 
turned on. That leaves me, guys, before I had this thing run anymore, I'm going to throw my gauges on here. I want to see what my head pressure is because instantly, guys, if I know my outdoor fan motor is running, I definitely want to see what my operating head pressure is. If my operating head pressure, what well, my head pressure is, is, is okay. If it's not like excessive, what I want to do is I want to check this cap and also he has a hose here. I want to check that on the property hose down the coil. But yeah, guys, let me get my gauges and let's see what the hair pressure is. I'll see you in a little bit. Peace. And holy shit, guys. I should have got that on video. I turned this unit on. The hair pressure shot to like 440 and it turned off. So what I'm going to do, guys, is... For sure, I'm gonna. I gotta open this up. I'm gonna reset it one more time, and before I reset this, guys, I'm gonna hose this coil down a little bit here. My low side, it was pretty high, but guys, remember, I mean, it's not real hot out here now, but I know there's like some humidity inside, but. There's a good chance this unit can probably be overcharged too, based on how my low how my low side was jumping up as well. But guys, let me hold this coil down and reset it. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, these coils didn't even look too bad. I even hold the one that's still working down on the other side. With my fan motor working, guys, I'm gonna check that with the power off before I reset this. I'm gonna um, check the cap, but guys, with my fan motor working and the coils clean. There's a good chance this thing could be overcharged, which is pretty crazy being a, that this is not even an 80 degree day. And this is our first time here. I don't know if someone else came out here before, but at this point, guys, it doesn't matter. I got enough information to work off of that I can definitely form a, a diagnosis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the cat I'm gonna reset that. I'm gonna check the cap, reset the uh, the switch, and then I'm going to probably have to take some. I'm gonna have to adjust the charge. That's for sure. And that's a 14A system too. So, but yeah, guys, let me put this up, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Peace. All right, guys. I took a little bit of charge out. I didn't want to take too much out. My head pressure is. Slightly below 300. I still got a 40 degree coil. And my suction line temperature is dropping, which is what we want. But yeah, guys, this thing didn't stay on for like more than five seconds before. This thing jumped, started at three and it jumped up to like 450 and then it turned off. And like I said, guys, the coils wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too bad, but it also I checked that capacitor and that cap is still within range, so. I think replacing that cap wouldn't have made much of a difference since my fan motor, everything is still running. And we got a slightly higher than a 40 degree coil. That's probably due to, like I said, there's humidity inside. I don't expect this to get at 40 until like a couple of hours of runtime because there's definitely a decent heat load for this unit to. to to remove hey guys this is why whenever you add or remove refrigerant you want to definitely babysit the numbers for a few minutes never just go off how, how the pressures look immediately after adding or removing refrigerant give it a few minutes because like i said you never know if the numbers can fluctuate again so give it about like another three or four minutes my low side i don't really care that much about my hot side is doing that concerned about because that is what calls this to disengage. Fifty eight degree. Alright so let's babysit the numbers for a little bit and I'm gonna go inside and check my supply. I'll be right back. Alright guys it's been a few minutes and my hot side is down to so three 10 315 and my low side is still above 40 
guys. This customer wants to sign up for the maintenance agreement. So I gotta go inside. I gotta check those two filters. But yeah, guys, this is a simple diagnosis. No 24, well, I had 240 at L1 and L2. The contactor's not pulled in, indoor fan is running. By me checking from wide to ground and having 24, I knew inside that my circuits was closed and I knew that power is already coming out here. But anytime I had power from one leg of my contactor to ground on the low voltage side, remember, this is 24 volts. I always like to make sure that I don't have any safeties out here that are open before I start going back inside. And like I said, that's when I found my high pressure switch open. I'll push it in, push the high pressure switch in, and that led me to knowing that, like I said, this, the head pressure was way too high. So I took a little bit of refrigerant out, not a lot. And at this point, like I said, everything's gonna be documented and we'll let the customer know moving forward. We'll come out here and we'll check the pressures, keep everything clean, and we can rock out. There you guys have it. I gotta go back inside. I gotta check, I gotta look at the filters and check my supply temperatures on the first and second floor. Peace out guys, I gotta rock out. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.